Hello everybody, how are you? Today we are going to solve October, November 2014, one, two paper. It's physics 5054 course and it's an MCQ paper. Let's start. On your screen, you can see question number one. When a heavy coin falls a short distance towards the ground, it does not reach terminal velocity. Why is this? When you fall a short distance and the coin is heavy, during this fall, when you start falling, at the start there is no air resistance. The downward force weight, it remains constant throughout the fall. And as the body gains speed, the air resistance increases as the speed of the coin increases. But as the fall is very short, due to this reason, you know, the air resistance never become equal to the weight. So that's why the coin will never reach the terminal velocity. Because at the terminal velocity, the weight and the air resistance, they become equal to each other. But this will not happen in this case. The air resistance will not reach or it will never become equal to the weight because the fall is very short. So D is the answer. The weight of the coin is always more than the air resistance. That's why the coin will not reach the terminal velocity. So D is the option for question number two, uh, question number one, sorry. Okay, on your screen, we have question number two. A car travels along a road at 50 kilometers per hour. The driver applies the same braking force at the same place on a day when the surface is dry. And then on a day when the road is wet. On the wet surface, how many of these distances are greater than on the dry surface? Breaking distance, stopping distance, thinking distance. So we need to understand first what are these distances. The meaning of the thinking distance is that when a driver is driving a car, and for example, when he see a uh, optical on the road and his pro his brain do the process and his feet go on to the brake paddle so during this thinking process and his feet going on to the braking paddle during that duration the car covers some distance that distance is known as thinking distance and that thinking distance depends upon the the condition of the brain or the health of the driver. The second thing is the braking distance. The braking distance is when you have applied the brakes, after applying the brakes, the car covers some distance. So that distance is braking distance. The braking distance obviously depends upon the friction between the road and the tire. And the stopping distance, the third thing, stopping distance is the sum of the thinking distance and the braking distance. So you see, there are thinking distance does not depend upon the road is wet or it is dry. Breaking distance and the stopping distance, they both depend upon this. So these two distances will be affected. So for question number two, C is the answer. For question number two, C is the answer. On your screen, you can see question number three. In a model of an atom, electrons may move in circular orbits around a nucleus. Which statement about the electrons is correct? The electrostatic force on the electrons is away from the nucleus. 
the acceleration of the electrons is towards the central nucleus the speed of the electrons vary continuously the velocity of the electrons remain constant see the electrons in a simplified model the electrons are revolving around the nucleus and they are revolving in circular orbits and we have learned that when an object moves in a circular path its acceleration is always towards the center of that circle so that the acceleration of these electrons should be always towards the central nucleus so b is the right option question number 3 b is the right option question number 4 a boy stands on some bathroom scales the reading on the scale is 50 kg what is the mass and what is the weight of the boy the mass of the boy is given in the question 50 kg the weight can be calculated you know the formula for the weight is w equals to mg where m is the mass in kg and g is the gravitational field strength in newton per kg its value is 10 so i have done this numerical on a sheet let's see question number 4 on your screen you can see that w is equals to mg equals to 50 into 10 equals to 500 newton so the mass is 50 kg and the weight is 500 newton So for question number 4 B is the choice. Let's move to the next question. Question number 5 is on your screen. Two identical beakers contain the same mass of liquid. There is a different liquid in each beaker. Liquid P its height is h liquid Q its height is 3h the important thing given in the question is that both the liquids have the same mass he says the liquid q has a density rho its density q the liquid q its density is rho and it is given what is the density of the liquid p okay you know because in both the liquid both the beakers there are different liquids but their mass is same it means that mass of p and the mass of q they are equal to each other so let me show you the working i have done this okay on your screen you can see the mass of the p is equals to mass of the q density 1 multiply volume 1 is equals to density 2 multiply volume 2 mass is equal to density multiplied by volume you know that formula because both beakers are identical to each other so they both have the same cross sectional area the volume of the liquid is in the beaker is equals to cross sectional area multiply height of the liquid so d1 multiply a multiply h equals to d2 multiply area multiply 3h the height of the q is 3h so a and a because it's same on both the sides so it will be cancelled on both sides of the equation h and h will be cancelled so you are left with d1 equals to 3d2 the d2 value is given rho its value is given as rho so d1 will be equals to 3 rho so c is the choice question number 5 c is the choice three row i hope you have understood this okay we are going to next question question number 6 what affects the stability of an object the stability of an object depends upon how wide its space and it depends upon that how low is the center of the mass location of the center of the mass 
So A is the choice, only its area, base area, and the location of its center of mass. So for question number six, A is the answer. A is the choice. Right now on your screen, we have question number seven. The object, the objects of different weights are placed on a grid, on a, sorry, on a rigid horizontal surface. Which row shows the correct pressure acting on the surface? The pressure acted on a surface can be calculated by the formula weight divided by contact area. So what you will do, you will find the pressure of A, find the pressure of the B, find the pressure of the C, find the pressure of the D. And then we will see A, uh, out of these four, which answer, the answers which they have given is correct. So I have done this calculation on a paper. On your screen, you can see the pressure of A is equals to 10, the weight divided by its area, and the answer is 100. Pressure of B, 20 divided by area, 0 0.2, and the answer is 100. Pressure of C, 30 divided by 0 0.1, and the answer is 300. Pressure of the D, that is 40 divided by 0 0.2, and the answer is 200. So the C, we got the answer 300. And that is the same answer given in the question. So only the C is the right pressure calculated by the paper setter. So C is the choice. Question number C, the right pressure calculated by the paper setter. C is the right answer. Okay. So we are moving to the next question. Okay, on your screen, we have question number eight. The diagram shows a simple manometer that contains a liquid. Side X is connected to a gas supply of pressure R. Side Y is open to the atmosphere at pressure S. Which pressure is the length H used to measure? You see here, we have connected a gas supply and it is pushing the mercury level. Here we have atmospheric pressure and it is also pushing the mercury level. The mercury level on the atmospheric side is higher and on the gas side it is lower. It means the pressure of the gas is more than the atmospheric pressure. The difference of level in both the limbs of the manometer, the difference of the level in both the limbs shows the difference of the pressure between the gas and the atmosphere. So here, this H, here this H, that is representing the pressure difference between R and S. So H is representing R minus S. So C is the choice. Question number eight, C is the choice. Okay, we are moving to next question. Let me increase its size. Okay. Question number nine. A child of mass 30 kg is moving at a speed of four meter per second when she reaches the bottom of a slide. What is her kinetic energy? You know, the kinetic energy formula is one by two mv squared. F mv squared. So just put the values and do the calculation. You will get the answer. I have done this calculation for you. This is right now on your screen. Kinetic energy is equal to 1 by 2 mv square. 1 by 2 into 30 into 4 square. The answer is 240 joules. So C is the choice. Question number 9. C is the choice. 240 joules. Okay, so we are moving to the next question. <clears throat> On your screen, you can see question number 10. A constant force F pulls a block of weight W up the slope shown. How much work is done pulling the block up the slope? You know, when an object is pulled in this way, up a slope, the work done can be calculated by 
two methods. One method which we frequently used is the weight multiply the vertical height gain. Weight multiply the vertical height gain that will be W multiply H in this case. But that is not given in the options. So another way of calculating the work done is the force which you have applied and the distance the object has moved in the direction of the force. So in that case, the work done will be force F multiply L. L is the distance the body moved in the direction of the applied force. F multiply L. And that is given in the options. So B is the right option for the work done. Question number 10, B is the option. On your screen, we have question number 11. Which statement about copper explains why it is a better conductor of heat than glass? You see, copper is a better conductor of heat. Glass can also conduct the heat a little bit. It's not that good conductor. Conduction happens by the two methods. One is the energy or heat is transferred by the vibration of the molecules or atoms or particles. Vibration will happen in copper and it will also happen in glass. But the copper has another extra thing. The copper has free electrons in it. And those free electrons can absorb at one end of the copper energy, heat. And then they can flow through the body of the copper to the cold end. So the free electrons will absorb energy at the hot end. Through the body of the copper, they will flow to the cold end the energy. And the heat will be transferred to the cold end. This is called free electron diffusion. So you see, the copper is a good conductor of heat. The reason is there are free electrons in the copper. The glass don't have those free electrons. So the choice is D. For question number 11, the choice is D. Okay. Now on your screen, you can see question number 12. The diagram shows a frozen pond with the surface of the ice slowly melting. As heat is transferred from the warmer air above it, by which process is heat transferred from the air to the ice? So you see the warmer air is here and the ice is below that air. The air, warm air is here. So the heat needs to be transferred downward. The convection cannot transfer heat downward. By the process of convection, the heat is always tra transferred in the upward direction. So convection is not involved there. So the, the other two methods, they can be involved. So the heat is being transferred from the warmer air to the colder ice by the process of radiation and conduction. Convection cannot be involved. So D is the answer. Question number 12, D is the option. On your screen, you can see question number 13. The diagram shows a clinical thermometer. Which factor affects the sensitivity of the thermometer? The sensitivity of the thermometer depends upon the most frequently asked factor on which the sensitivity depends is the diameter of the bore of that capillary. The diameter of the bore in which the mercury travels, the mercury thread travels. The wider that bore, the less sensitive the thermometer. The smaller that bore, the more sensitive the thermometer will be. 
So the sensitivity of the thermometer depends upon the diameter of the bore. Question number 13, B is the option. Okay, we are moving to the next question. A centimeter scale is fixed next to an unmarked mercury in glass thermometer. The ice point and the steam point are marked. On the thermometer, you can see the ice point is marked at 1. And the steam point is marked at 11. And at the mark of 6.6, .6, the right now the mercury thread is. What is the temperature shown on the thermometer? So we have to use a formula to find what is the reading on the thermometer right now. L0 is 1 centimeter here. L100 is 11 centimeter here. L theta is 6.6 .6 centimeter here. Ice point means 0 degree. Steam point means 100 degree. And the question is, what is that value of the theta? T e theta minus T naught divided by T 100 minus T naught equals to L theta minus L naught divided by L 100 minus L naught. T theta is the question. Theta is the question. Minus T naught is 0. T 100 is 100. Minus T naught is 0. Equals to L theta is 6.6. .6. L naught means the length of the mercury thread at 0 degree centigrade. That is 1. L 100 is 11. Minus L naught is 11. So theta by 100 is equals to 5.6 divided by 10. So theta will be 56 degree centigrade. It's a very it's a very famous kind of question. This question, the numerical related to this length of the mercury and the temperature, it's a very famous question. So do you do it very carefully? I hope you have understood this. So B is the option for question number 14. On your screen, you can see question number 15. At a constant temperature, a solid has a fixed shape and a fixed volume. Which road describes the shape and volume of a liquid at constant temperature? You know, the shape of the volume is not fixed. But the volume of the... Sorry, I said... Shape of the liquid is not fixed, but the volume of the liquid is fixed. Shape is not fixed, volume is fixed. So C is the choice. Question number 15, C is the choice. He says a plastic tube, question number 16, a plastic tube is immersed in a liquid of refractive index 1.4. Light traveling in the plastic tube strikes the inside surface at an angle of incidence of 70 degree. The light undergoes total internal reflection. You see, there are two materials. One is this plastic tube and then there is outer material. The light strikes here and is totally internally reflected. The angle of incidence right now is 70. What describes the value of the critical angle in the plastic and the refractive index of the plastic? You know, when this process takes place, the material in which the light is traveling is supposed to be the optically dense medium. Its refractive index should be more than the refractive index of the outer material. The refractive index of the outer material is 1.4. The refractive index of the plastic tube must be more than 1.4. Another point is, at this angle of incidence, at the angle of incidence of 70, the total internal reflection took place. The total internal reflection only takes place when the angle of incidence is more than critical angle. It means that the critical angle is less than 70. So look at the question, what the question is asking. He's saying the critical angle in the plastic, it should be less than 70. And the refractive index of the plastic, it should be more than 1.4. So C looks the option. Question number 16, C is the option. 
the critical angle in the plastic is less than 70 and the refractive index of the plastic is greater than 1.4 i have is i i think that i have made my point clear and it's clear to you okay the question number 17 is on your screen which application uses microwaves you know for the satellite television the image uh, the signals are sent with the help of the microwaves to the satellites in the space and from the satellites in the space the signals are sent back onto the ground with the help of the microwaves so microwaves biggest use is in the satellite television for question number 17, D is the option. On your screen, question number 18, a student stands at a distance D from the base of a tall cliff. He claps to gather two pieces of wood and measures the time that elapses before he hear the echo. He conducts the experiment five times and obtains these results. The speed of sound is 320 meters per second. What is the distance D? Distance D is the distance between the man and the cliff. The, when he claps and uh, he heard the echo, the time taken, he counted it, he measured it five times. So what you will do, you will find the average, the average time. How you will find the average? You add these five values, get their answer, and divide it with five. So you will get the average time. Then multiply that average time with the speed of the sound. So whatever the distance, speed multiplied time will give you the distance. That is the distance traveled by the sound waves. They travel from the clap, from the boy to the cliff, and from cliff back to the boy. So that is the distance we will, which you will get. Then divide that distance with two and you will get the distance between the cliff and the wall. I have done this on a paper. Let me show you that calculation. Okay, 18, question number 18 was on your screen. First, we found the average time. We added the five times and we divided with five. You got 0 0.75 seconds. And the speed was given 320 meters per second. The distance traveled by the sound wave is speed multiply time. 320 multiply 0 0.75, the answer is 240 meter. The distance between the boy and the cliff is half that 240 meter. So 240 divided by 2, and the answer will be 120 meter. So the option is A. Question number 18, 120 meter, option is A. I hope you have understood this numerical. On your screen, you can see now question number 19. Ultrasound has many uses. For what are the ultrasound waves used? Killing cancerous cells? No. Prenatal scanning? Yes, you must have heard the word ultrasound. It is used for prenatal scanning. So B is the option. Question number 19, B is the option. Question number 20 is on your screen. A metal bar PQ hangs from a thin thread and always comes to rest with the end P pointing north. It means that the PQ bar is a magnet because this is the property of the magnet and the P is its north. Another bar, XY, of the same metal settles in no definite direction. So it means that XY bar is not magnetized. It is simple, maybe steel or maybe iron. What happens if the two bars are brought near one another? Okay, so XY bar is not magnetized. So it's any end will be attracted to both north and it will be also attracted to south of the bar, uh, bar magnet. So and P and NQ both attract the end X. That is the right option. So question number 20, A is the option. Okay. 
so on your screen right now you can see question number 21 the diagram shows a 12 volt dc power, power supply connected across a coil with a metal core the core becomes a magnet when the current is switched on it remains a magnet after the current is switched off the important thing is that metal core became a magnet when the current dc current was flowing but when you switched off the dc current it still got its magnetism it retained its magnetism so it means it is a hard magnetic material and the hard magnetic material the famous hard magnetic material is steel so the metal core is made up of steel okay question number 22 a positively charged rod is held close to an earth metal sphere what describes the charge on the metal sphere so try to understand you see this is a positively charged rod when i bring this positively charged rod to this metal sphere the electrons on the metal sphere will be attracted to this positive charge so free electrons will accumulate on this right side so here lot of negative charges will appear on this side positive charges due to deficiency of electrons will appear but this left side is also connected to earth so when this will become positive electrons from the earth will come here and neutralize this positive so here will be lot of negative electrons so what what describes the charge on the metal sphere it is negative because electrons are attracted towards the rod yeah that's true it is neutral because electrons are attracted towards the rod and protons are repelled no it is neutral because it is earth no it is positive because protons are repelled by the rod no so a is the option it is negative question number 22 a is the option you can see question number 23 on your screen two charged matter spheres are suspended close to each other which diagram shows the charge distribution on the sphere and the direction of the forces on the spheres you see in the a diagram he has shown positive positive charges the same charge is repelled but he has shown attraction by arrows he is showing attraction so this is wrong b this is positive charge this is positive charge and they are repelling each other so it's look convincing so b looks right c positive and negatives and they are attracting but the problem is he has shown the positive on this end and the negative on this end they should only be on this other spaces here he has shown the positive and the negative on the on the right face or the side but he has shown repulsion so the only right option looks b so question number 23 b is the right option question number 24 is on your screen and uh, let me increase the size which list contains only electric insulators electric insulators are those materials through which the electricity cannot pass so glass plastic rubber they all are they all are insulators so question number 24 a is the option they all are insulators question number 23 is on your screen the currents in different parts of the circuit are i1 i2 i3 and i4 which statement is correct you know the current coming from the battery and the current going going back to the battery they are equal to each other i1 and i4 should be equal then here at this junction the current is dividing and because there are two branches and one branch has a larger resistance 
as compared to the other. So the branch which has larger resistance will have smaller current. And the branch which has smaller resistance will have larger current. So I1 and I4 are equal. And I3, I3 will be larger or greater than I2. So it looks B is the option. Question number 25, B is the option. Okay. Students, we are moving to question number 26. The diagram shows a circuit that has two resistors in series with a 12 volt supply. What is the current in the circuit? If you want to find out the current in the circuit, we need to know the total resistance of the circuit. Because the total, the, the resistors are connected in series, very easily we can find their total resistance. Simply add them. 2 ohm plus 3 ohm, 5 ohm. So the total resistance of the whole circuit is 5 ohm. The current coming from the battery is EMF divided by the total resistance. So 12 divided by 5. 12 divided by 5, the answer will be 2.4 ampere. So A is the choice. For question number 26, A is the choice. Okay. We are moving to the next question. Let us reduce the size a little bit so you can see all the figure. Okay. So question number 27 is on your screen. An ammeter is connected to three resistors and a power supply. Which arrangement of resistors gives the greatest ammeter reading? The greatest ammeter reading means that the amount of current is largest. The amount of current from the battery can be only largest when the total resistance of the circuit is smallest. The total resistance of the circuit can be made smallest if all the available resistors are connected parallel to each other. So in figure D, you see he has connected all the three resistors parallel to each other. In this case, the total resistance of the whole circuit will be smallest. And when the total resistance will be smallest, the current coming from the battery will be largest. So for question number 27, D is the option. On your screen, you can see we have question number uh, 28 on your screen. There is a current of 0 0.25 ampere in a lamp connected to 240 volt supply, voltage supply. What is the input power to the lamp? You know the formula for the power is P equals to IV. P equals to IV. So put the values 0 0.25 multiplied 240 and the answer will be 60 watt. So the answer is 60 watt, which is B option. We have used the formula power is equal to IV. So B is the option for question number 28. On your screen, you can see question number 29. Which unit measures the energy input to an electric appliance? Electric energy is always measured with the units. Kilo watt R. Kilo watt R is the unit of electric energy used commercially. Even Vodda, the power supply company in Pakistan, that charges you the it, it charges you on the basis of kilo watt R. Question number thirty is on your screen. Let me reduce the size a little bit. Yeah. An electric pump is marked 0 0.5 ampere. It is connected to a socket marked 30 ampere maximum. Which fuse is best to use in the lamp? The electric lamp will normally use 0 0.5 ampere current. So use a fuse whose rating is little more than 0 0.5 ampere. The given options are 0 0.5, 3, 30, and 40 ampere. So we will go with the three amps. So B is the option. 
for 30B is the option. On your screen, 30, question number 31. Two long parallel conductors carrying current lie in a horizontal plane. The two conductors attract one another. That two currents must. You know, if you have two conductors parallel to each other, like this, and the direction of the current in them is same, then they, both conductors will attract each other. If the direction of the current is opposite in both the conductors, then they will repel each other. So in this case, he, he says, he said that the conductors are attracting each other. It means that the direction of the current in both the conductor is same. So A is the choice for question number 31. Okay, we are moving to the next question. On your screen, we have question number 32. The diagram shows a DC motor with its coil horizontal. He says, why is a split ring commutator used? You know, the function of the split ring commutator is to reverse the direction of the current whenever the coil is vertical. And by doing so, if the force on the sides of the coils is reversed. And we make sure that the coil continue to rotate. So the function of of the commutator is to reverse the direction of the current in the coil when the coil is in the vertical position. So B is the option. Question number 32, question number 32, B is the option. To change the current direction in the coil as the coil passes the vertical position. Question number 33 is on your screen. A student moves a magnet into a coil of wire as shown in the diagram. The coil of wire is connected to a sensitive ammeter, which change does not produce an increase in the reading. Increasing the number of turns on the coil, if you increase the number of turns of the coil, the ammeter reading will increase. Increasing the resistance of the ammeter, that will have no effect. Increasing the speed of the magnet, it will increase the current. Increasing the strength of the magnet, it will also increase the current. So B is the one option which cannot affect the, or it will not increase the reading on the ammeter. So B is the option. Question number 34 is on your screen. The coil of an AC generator is rotated and the output is displayed on the screen of a cathode ray oscilloscope. The diagram shows the trace on the screen. Which trace appears on the screen when the speed of rotation of the coil is doubled but the setting of the CRO is unaltered? When you will double the speed of the generator, the voltage produced will also become double. So the amplitude of this display on the CRO, that should also double. So the amplitude should become log larger. Plus, the time period will decrease. The frequency of the current induced will increase. When the frequency of the current will increase. Before on the display, there was only a single wave. Now on the same display, two waves should appear. So the final answer is that there should be two waves on the display and their amplitude should be larger than the wave shown in the question. So it looks to me that D is the option. Question number 34, D is the option. Okay, so we are moving to question number 35. In the circuit shown, R is a light dependent resistor. Its resistance decreases when the intensity of the light shining on it increases. The light intensity on R increases. 
what happens to the brightness of the two lamps L1 and L2? You know, this branch and this branch, they both are parallel to each other, plus they are parallel to this battery. So whatever is the whatever is the EMF of the battery, same is the voltage drop on L1, and same is the voltage drop here on this branch. But here, these two are in series with each other. So what he says that the brightness has increased, the density of the light on R has increased. When this will happen, the resistance of this thing will decrease. When the resistance of this will decrease, the voltage drop here will decrease and the voltage drop here has to be increased. So L2 will become brighter. L1 will be at its normal brightness. So L1 will be stay, L1 stays the same. And the brightness of L2 will increase because there will be a larger voltage drop across L2 now. So it looks to me that for 35, D is the answer. Question number 36 is on your screen. In the circuit shown, resistor X and Y act as a potential divider to control the speed of a motor. What is the reason for the potential divider? So, you know, this potential divider has the ability to provide different amount of voltages to this motor. So by adjusting the resistance of this variable resistor, we will be able to control the voltage provided to this motor and we will be able to control the speed of the motor. So the potential divider is actually to vary the potential difference across the motor. So C is the option. Question number 36, C is the option. On your screen, question number 37. Why is a read relay used in a circuit, switching circuit? Relay is used, relay operates on a small current and a small voltage. But by the help of relay, we are able to on or off another circuit, which carries large amount of current and large amount of current. So the basic function of the relay is to switch on a large current using a small current. So C is the option for question number 37. Question number 38 is on your screen. People working with radioactive materials use a photographic film badge covered in a paper. The badge is used to monitor the level of their exposure to radiation. Which radiation is detected? You know, because the badge is covered in a paper, so it will not be able to detect the alpha radiation alpha particle the reason is the penetrating power of the alpha particles is very low they will be not able to penetrate the paper which is covering the badge yes beta and gamma they have high penetration power so this badge can be used to detect exposure to the gamma rays and the beta particles so for question number 38 C is the option. Question number 39 is on your screen. When a radioactive atom decays by alpha particle emission, its nucleus loses. Whenever alpha particle decay happens, alpha particle is like a nucleus of a helium. It has two protons and two neutrons. Its mass number is 4 and its proton number is 2. So whenever a parent nucleus undergoes alpha particle emission, it loses two protons and it loses two neutrons. So D is the option. Question number 39, D is the option. Okay, we are on the last question, question number 40. A neutral atom of chlorine-37 
is compared with the neutral atom of argon 37. See, note that this 37 is not the atomic number. It is the mass number. Okay? How do the number of electrons and the number of neutrons in each of the atom compare? They will be different. Number of electrons in both of them will be different. Number of neutrons in both of them will be different. So for question number 40, A is the option. So that's it for today. This was uh, October, November 2014, 1-2 paper, Physics 5054 course. The paper number was 1-2. I have tried my best to explain to you that how these MCQs are solved. I hope that I will be, I am or I will be little helpful for you. So thank you very much, everybody. Have a good day and God bless.